Hi, this is Mr. Petito, and right now we're going to take a look at the interaction settings of accessibility. We've already taken a look at the vision settings in our last task, and in this task we'll take a look at interaction. Now most of these settings are going to help the user interact with the iPad if they have fine or gross motor impairments. So many of these you will not use, for example, switch control, the first one on the list, which lets the user use a third-party device to control the iPad. Right? So unless you have that accommodation, there's no need for you to use switch control nor any of the settings within. The next one, though, assistive touch is pretty useful. By enabling assistive touch, you're basically putting this little widget on your screen. It looks like this. And it can be docked to the left-hand side or to the right-hand side. And you can also change the opacity. So if you really want it really faint when it's not being used, like so, Right, or you can have it persistent and always be there. Right, you can change the opacity. And within this widget are all of your different iPad controls from one dashboard. For example, instead of having to press the physical home button to go home, I can press this virtual home button to go home. I can access my control center. I can access Siri. Hello, Siri. Is it me you're looking for? <laughs> OK, I can access my notifications. All right, so these are all usually gesture based or button based features, but instead I can access them through this little control panel here. There are more even within the device section here. Here I can rotate my screen. I can lock my rotation, volume up, volume down. There's even more. I can restart my iPad altogether. I can speak the screen. This is really useful. Again, when you're viewing an article and I want to go to reader mode, right? I can go to device, more, and speak the screen. And then Safari will actually read the article for me, or I can slow it down and speed it up. I can dock this off to the side or close it down altogether device more. I can bring up the multitasking, which is the same thing as just the control panel, what we saw earlier. I can take a screenshot, so forth. All right, so those are the assistive touch, touch accommodations. I'm going to turn that off for now. The remaining features are all accessibility features that are meant to assist the user in interacting with the iPad, and all of them will change what the iPad does or when it does it based on your touch. For example, the home button. If I wanted to double press the home button to get to the control panel, like so, I can adjust the click speed for that. Or if I'm always accidentally enabling Siri, I can turn off the press hold the home button to turn on Siri. Speaking of Siri, I also have some other options here related to Siri. I can turn off the voice feedback, or if I'm unable to speak, I can turn on the type to Siri, which would then let me use Siri just using the keyboard rather than my voice. Speaking of the keyboard, there's keyboard settings as well. I can turn off the lowercase keys. I can also turn off or on key repeat. So key repeat is if I were to hold down the A key, for example, right, and a zillion A's would show up. I can turn that off. So if I'm holding down a key, the letter will only appear once. Sticky keys. Sticky keys is actually pretty useful if you're trying to learn keyboard shortcuts. Typically, when you want to use keyboard shortcuts, you have to hold down one key while pressing the other for it to work. For example, holding down Shift and then pressing the T to get a capital T, or holding down the Command key and then pressing C to copy whatever you have selected. But if I turn on sticky keys, I don't have to hold down the key. I can just tap it. To see this in action, I'll go here to Notes. Here I have some just some random text. And if I were to just tap Shift, not hold it down, you see now the shift is now a sticky, so the iPad thinks I'm still holding down shift, but I'm not. The icon in the upper right lets me know that, and now whatever letter I type will be a capital letter. Likewise, if I wanted to copy 
right? Typically I can do a, con a command C, but instead of holding down command, I can just tap it and then tap C. Again, this is really useful when you want to learn your keyboard shortcuts because just by tapping the command key, now a little menu pops up to let me know what my various options are. So if I wanted to uh, make things bold, it lets me know that it's command B. So I could type B, right? And now it's not bold because it was bold before. I can tap command, tap C, and now it's copied, right? If I hold down, or if I tap command, and then I tap V, right, it'll paste. So that's sticky keys. I'm going to go ahead and turn sticky keys off. OK, the last one I'll talk about is the shake to undo. Okay, right now it's turned on. And what shake to undo is, is if I were to physically shake my iPad, right, it's going to prompt me, do I want to undo what I just did? Right? Now, if your iPad is constantly in motion, that means that you're going to be constantly be prompted to undo whatever you just did. Right, so you can toggle off the undo feature so that way you're not prompted to undo. And that's an overview of the interaction settings within the accessibility menu.